and the search begins for the genetic roots to absolute musical talent. We want to understand the genetic aspect of this trait. The directions for a human being are written in code, three billion letters long. These instructions tell our bodies how to live, how to grow, how to die. Researchers call this code the sequence. We all know that research institutions are working hard to identify genes for diseases and aging. But what about talent or painting or musical ability? We're going to tell you about the start of the search for the gene or genes for absolute pitch. The one thing, the only thing I know about absolute pitch or perfect pitch as it is sometimes called is that I don't have it. There are a few lucky people who do. In San Francisco, researchers are collecting blood samples from such musically talented people. It is the beginning phase of a project to see if there is such a thing as the musical gene. In the world of classical music, concert pianist Roy Bogus is a true virtuoso. In fact, Roy was a child prodigy who performed a Mozart concerto when he was only six. It was like a magnet that drew me to it, uh, whereas uh, most children will have favorite toys and games they like to play and things they like to do with their friends uh, down the street or whatever. I always wanted to go to the piano and, and play it. That was, that was my overriding uh, interest. Uh, I'd rather do that than anything else, almost, including, including eat. <laughs> but it's not his musical talent that's of interest to scientists. It's another remarkable gift. Roy has absolute pitch, the ability to recognize musical tones without the aid of any external reference. Well, this became clear almost immediately. My father used to like to play this game with me where uh, I would turn my back and he would put notes down on the piano and I would hear them and tell them what they were. At the University of California in San Francisco, music and absolute pitch are very much on the minds of the researchers. Especially Dr. Jane Gitcher. She's investigating the genetics of perfect pitch. I have always sung my whole life and studied very seriously for a period of about 10 years and worked with pianists who, it turns out, had perfect pitch. And they'd say, can't you hear that? It's a G-sharp. And I no, I can't tell that's a G-sharp. And I was amazed to work with people who could just pluck the tones, you know, out of the air. Only one in 10,000 people have absolute pitch. Most of us have relative pitch, which means we need a reference tone to identify notes. That's the reason an orchestra tunes up together before a concert, or a piano note is helpful when tuning a guitar. But external aids aren't necessary for people with absolute pitch. Mozart had absolute pitch, as did Bach and Beethoven. In this century, acclaimed musicians like the pianist Arthur Rubinstein and violinist Yasha Heifetz were all gifted with absolute pitch. It's instantaneous recognition, and I think the color analogy is the best one. Uh, you don't have to stop and think about uh, the color blue or the color red. It, it's just, it just is. You, you just know. You recognize the color uh, without having to process that. It's the same way that I recognize pitches. People like Roy, who are born with absolute pitch, don't necessarily retain it. Research indicates a childhood environment is crucial. Absolute pitchability isn't solely dependent on genes. Our hypothesis is that that ability is in part dictated by genetics. And we want to understand the genetic aspect of this trait. Ultimately, the goal is to find the genes that are responsible for this trait. Well, 
No, but we, you know, the next step would be... Jennifer uh, Lee has volunteered to be in Dr. Gitcher's uh, study. Yeah, well, Jennifer is a medical student at UC San Francisco. Today, she's going to take the auditory tone test on the survey website to see if she has perfect pitch. You want to try that? Yeah, sure. Okay, great. When we interview people with absolute pitch, we, of course, ask about their siblings about the early musical training of their siblings and about whether their siblings have absolute pitch. In order for this project to be successful, we need to identify people who have absolute pitch and who also have a relative with absolute pitch because we're kind of trying to do genetic mapping. We can't do it on one single isolated individual. We need, say, a pair of siblings um, who both have absolute pitch. People who are blood-related share many hereditary traits, so when their genes are mapped, it's easier to identify recurring genetic markers which correspond to the traits. For example, absolute pitch. So far, Dr. Gitcher's results indicate that if a person has absolute pitch, received early musical training, and has a sibling who also had early musical training, there's a 50% chance the sibling will also have absolute pitch because they have the same genetic makeup. There it is. Okay. Excellent. Great. There you are. Good. Yeah. Next is for me to ask you if you might have any other relatives that have perfect pitch. I have one. Who's that? My cousin mm -hmm. in Korea, uh -huh. um, she's a musician and she has... Perfect Participants who successfully pass the perfect pitch uh, test then provide blood samples for DNA analysis. The cotton-like substance at the bottom of this test tube is DNA, which will be used to map the genes in hopes of locating one or more responsible for perfect pitch. It's presumably going to be a gene that has a simple DNA variant that gives rise to this ability. It may be more than one gene. And that's our goal. Figure out what it is, what it does. How does it lead to this ability? And then we can start asking questions uh, backwards in other organisms um, as well. Well, do birds have it? Do, do other species have it? And what might it be used for? Is there an association between um, particular variations in this gene and other, and other traits? The answers to these and other questions about perfect pitch are years ahead, but already one thing is crystal clear to Roy Bogus. There's been speculation about the music of Mozart as to whether that has an effect on, on one's thinking abilities, but one thing is very clear, babies adore Mozart. And I think that uh, it's very, very important all through the early ages and right up through grammar school to have uh, some kind of an art form in a child's life because uh, the thinking capacity that we have is not our entire brain. We need the, to have the whole thing working. And there's no better or easier or more enjoyable art to have at an early age than music. So, absolute pitch. What about rhythm? And then there's painting and photography. If true talent all starts at the molecular level in our cells, then beauty is truly in the eye of the beholder. That's life. I'm Lucky Severson. The Secrets of the Sequence teaching materials were developed at Virginia Commonwealth University with funding from the National Academy of Sciences and the Pfizer Foundation. The original public television series, Secrets of the Sequence, was produced by Ward Television with funding from Pfizer, the Pfizer Foundation, Oracle, and the Council for Biotechnology Information. Special thanks to member institutions of the series advisory board, consisting of Virginia Commonwealth University, Harvard University, University of Wisconsin, University of Michigan, University of California at San Francisco, and the MRC Laboratory of Molecular Biology, Cambridge, England.